Good, so in this video we're going to look at uh, fractions, but this time how we divide one fraction by another. So let's start with a number like, well let's start with 33 divided by, let's say 33 fourths. And we're going to divide into 33 fourths 11 thirty-sixths. So what are we saying? We're saying this is our dividend and this is our divisor. And thinking about them as fractions like this with rather large numbers here on the numerator and here on the denominator makes them difficult to think about. So what I'm going to do straight away is I'm going to change uh, these numbers to something much easier to deal with. Let's actually let's just use a different colour here. Okay, so what I how I'm going to do that? I'm going to estimate um, what these numbers are on the number line by just dividing them through and rounding. So 33 fourths. What's that? Well, 33 divided by four is very close. To eight. In fact, it's eight and a quarter, but it's close to eight. So on my number line here, if I draw a, an end here, and then if I just join up here, okay, um, and let's just join that together, then what I can imagine I've got here is a length, say a strip of paper that's length eight centimeters. All right, so it's eight long. That's my first estimate. So 33 fourths is approximately equal to an eighth. Now let's do 11 36. What's that on my number line? Well, 11 36 is approximately equal to a third. So on my number line, that would be between zero and one. In fact, it would be we divide this into three and we would get a third just on the end here really a tiny amount compared with my eighth. So here's a third and the total length here is eight and I can see that if I write this out again as eight divided by a third, okay, what I'm saying is how many thirds are there in eight? The answer is well three in a unit times eight 24. 8 divided by a third is 24 and that's much easier to calculate than 33 fourths divided by 11 36. All right it's very much easier to see what's going on. Now the other thing I can do is if I've worked out that there are 8 thirds uh, sorry 24 thirds in 8 I can rewrite this like this. 8 times 3 also gives me 24. Therefore, 8 divided by a third is equivalent to 8 times 3 or 8 times 3 over 1. Because 3 over 1, 3 divided by 1, is exactly the same as 3. And I've done this because it gives us a really important idea that we can work with and the uh, the idea that uh, I'm going to work with let's call it a technique the technique I'm going to use is going to be extremely helpful for solving these kinds of problem so what is the technique let's just have a quick look at what we've got here we've got 8 divided by 3 being equivalent to 8 times 3 so 8 divided by a third rather is equivalent to 8 times 3 and it gives us a technique of converting from division to multiplication because a third is simply inverted here. The fraction here is simply inverted to create what was 1 divided by 3 now into 3 divided by 1. And that means that if I move over here, I can simply rewrite this. First I write my dividend, so that doesn't change, but I can now write multiplied by 36 divided by 11. 
In other words, all I've done is turn the thing upside down. Okay. Um, what we've got then here with our divisor is 36 was the denominator. It's now become the numerator. And 11, which was the numerator, has now become the denominator. And we can see that that's going to work because with the simpler numbers, it was very clear that we're entitled to do that. Okay, in the second half of the video, we'll look at this a little more closely. But for now, let's just work this through and solve the problem then. Okay, so now I can simply multiply across. But what I can do, I think, is simplify. So I'm going to write 36 over 4 times 33 over 11. That means I can cancel. 4 goes into 4 once. 36 divided by 4 gives me 9. 33 divided by 11, well, that's 3. 11 divided by 11 is 1. So I end up with 3 times 9, 27 divided by 1 equals 27. Now, whenever we complete a problem, it's a good idea to check that we've got something that sounds reasonable. And 27 and 24, well, they're not so far apart. So my estimate was 24. My actual answer is 27. I'm going to say that is very close. And so I think I've got the right result. OK, so now we've got our method. We know what we're doing. Let's have another go. This time, I'm going to take a number like 8 divided by 17. And let's divide by, so our divisor is going to be 19 over 2. So we could have chosen any number there. But what I've tried to do here is create, uh, what I had was a top heavy fraction up here. I've got now a, a conventional fraction. In other words, it's less than 1 divided now by an improper fraction, in, in other words, divided by a large number. So I've changed the sort of question that I've got here, but I'm going to use exactly the same method. OK, let's uh, go over to the right again and do an estimation. So what happens if I estimate what the answer is going to be? Well, 8 seventeenths. That's approximately equal to half, I would say. And 19 over 2, 19 halves, well, that's nearly 20 over 2. So that's approximately equal to 10. And now if we write this out uh, as a half divided by 10, because that's what our approximate values give us, we can see that what we're asking here sounds a bit strange, a bit, a bit stranger than what we had up here. But how many tens are there in a half? How many tens are there in a half? And that's the same as saying a half times a tenth. In other words, we should get the answer somewhere in the region of a twentieth. Okay. So now let's go to the left hand side and work out the problem now that we know roughly what the answer should be. So 8 divided by 17 is our dividend. So we simply write that out again. But now we're going to change our divisor into a multiplier by inverting the fraction. So we've got 2 nineteenths. OK. Now, I can see there's no um, cancellation possible here, so I'm just going to multiply across 2 times 8, 16, divided by 17 uh, times 19. 17 times 19 sounds tricky, but in fact, if I think of it as 17 times 20, then it's, uh, sorry, 20 minus 1 like this, 17 times 20 minus 1, then it becomes a lot easier. So I can say it's 16 divided by 17 times 20 is 340 and 17 times 1 is 17 so subtract 17 gives me an answer of 16 divided by let's see 3 323 okay so that's my answer i 
can't see any way of simplifying it. So going through my divisibility checks, it doesn't seem to, I can't seem to find any common factor. So I think that's the answer. Rather complicated looking fraction 16 320 thirds. But let me just check. So if I look over here, I should find it's roughly equivalent to a 20th. If I multiplied my 16 by 20, well, that's pretty easy. I would get 320. And 320 is very close to 323. So I'm confident about my answer. And I can simply give that a tick, say I think I've got that correct. OK, so let's do one more. This time, what I'm going to do is use um, some larger numbers. So it shouldn't give us any greater difficulty just because we're using larger numbers. But let's see what happens. 51 16th, so a top heavy improper fraction to start with. And let's, let's do something like this. So let's write 17 70 seconds. OK, so fairly large numbers now. What's going to happen? Well, again, I'm going to just estimate uh, what my answer should be. So if I estimate, if I think about what 51 sixteenths are going to be on my number line, well, 3 times 16 would give me 32, 48. That's close enough to 51. So I'm going to say 51 sixteenths approximately equal to 3. OK, it's a bit more, isn't it? It's a little bit more than three. It's about here, I guess, on the number line. But to keep the numbers simple, I'm saying it's approximately equal to three. And 17 72 70 seconds. Uh, 17 70 seconds, that's going to be a, a fraction then. So it's going to be below one. And what's that going to approximate to? It's approximately equal to four, I would say, because four times 17 is... 34 times 2, which is 68, that's pretty close to 72. So it's not a, a great approximation, but I think it's good enough. And so when we multiply this out, we're going to have 8, 8, not 8, let's delete that, 3 divided by 4, and 3 divided by 4 is, of course, 3 quarters. What if we had inverted this thing then, this uh, divisor here? Then it would have been 3 times a quarter. And 3 times a quarter is again 3 quarters. So just experimenting there with the inversion method. All right, but let's go back to the original problem. And we've got 51 sixteenths. So we write that out to start with, 51 sixteenths. Now, changing the divisor to a multiplier, so I multiply now, I take my denominator, put it at the top, 72 becomes my numerator, and I take my numerator, 17, to the bottom to become the denominator or the divisor within the fraction. So now, what have I got? Well, I'm going to rewrite this. Yes, let's just combine and commute so that we've got 51 seventeenths times 72 sixteenths. Uh, I didn't use cancelling last time, so I'm going to cancel this time. Um, that's 51. 17, 51 divided by 17 uh, gives me 3. 17 divided by 1 is 1. So let's just check that. 3 divided by 1 is 51 divided by 17. Yeah, that sounds right. Here... I can divide by 2, obviously. I can divide by 4 as well. If I do my divisibility checks, I can see with two figures here, I should be able to divide by 4. So let's do it. 16 divided by 4 um, is 4. 72 divided by 4 is going to be 36 divided by 2, which is 18. OK. Oh, it will divide again. So I could have divided by 8. So there's 2 and 9. If I multiply out, I've got 3 times 9, 27, 1 times 2, 2. So my answer is 27 divided by 2. Now, 
what's happened here I think is some sort of mistake and what I want to do is just then check why I've got a disparity between the answer I've got here and the answer that I thought I was going to get, that I was expecting to get from my estimate. Let's go back and check that the estimate was correct to start with. So I've got 51 divided by 16 approximates to 3. 17 divided by 72 approximates to 4. But 17, the numerator here, is much smaller than 72. So I can see that this isn't an improper fraction. This is, but this isn't. So I shouldn't have had uh, a whole number here because my, my fraction or my number should have been less than 1. So in fact what I've done is I've inverted it right from the start here. Let's get my eraser out and have another go. Okay. So I made a mistake. Let's try again. Let's, let's erase these as well. Okay. And this time, let's see if we can get close to 27 divided by 2. That would be good. All right. 17 divided by 72 is actually equivalent to... I can see my mistake now. Whoops. Let's get my correcting colour. It's actually equivalent to a quarter, so I accidentally turned it upside down. There was my mistake. And now if we say, well, 51 divided by 16, 51 16th and 70 17th, if they approximate to three, whoops, lots of slippages here, three, there we go, divided by a quarter, ah, that looks better. So three divided by a quarter, what we're asking is how many quarters are there in three? Well, if you think of our number line here again, there's my three, okay, down here. And if I look at my quarter, my quarter is going to be just here. So small it's quite tricky to draw. I'm going to get four of those quarters in one. So I'm going to get three times four, 12 in three. And if I rewrite this, obviously we've got 3 times 4 now equals 12. So my estimate is 12. I should get something in the region of 12. Have I got something close to 12? <coughs> well, let's do it as a division. Okay. So if I just divide in here, 2 into 20 gives me uh, 10. So, so I've got 10, 13 and a half. So 13 and a half is close enough to 12. It's in the same sort of area. <clears throat> so I can say I've got that one correct as well. Okay, so I hope that made sense. If uh, I went a little bit too fast, you know, of course you can stop the video, rewind, take it at your own pace. The important thing to remember, I think, is that when we're talking about division, what we're actually saying is how many of these, the divisors, are there in the dividend. And if you keep that in mind, then I don't think you get too confused. What we're saying is how many of these, in other words, what multiple of these make this? And if we're talking about a multiple, then of course we're already thinking in terms of multiplication. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is show you the algebra that allows us to do this inversion to change uh, a division into a multiplication. And let's just represent uh, the dividend, the fraction that we're going to divide into by let's say p, so where p stands for an integer, and q, q stands for the integer that divides into p. Okay, so p is the numerator, q is the denominator. And so now we divide by another fraction, which we'll call r over s, where again r is any integer and s is any integer as well, uh, numerator and denominator. Okay, so now we've got our dividend and our divisor. We now need our quotient, and we'll represent our quotient by Q. 
Now we're ready to rearrange. What I'll do first is treat R over S, the divisor here, as a single number. Okay, so not R divided by S, but just uh, a, a single number, R over S. So if I'm dividing by whatever this is, if I multiply both sides by this, then what I'm going to get is R over S appearing on the right hand side. So it becomes P over Q equals Q because R over S uh, divided by R over S equals 1. But over here times R over S. Okay? So that's how we move uh, this divided by R, R over S to the right side to become Q times R over S. That's the first step. The second step, I'm now going to multiply by S and divide by R. So in other words, what I'm doing is I'm treating this R over S now not as a single number, but as R divided by S. So if R is divided by S, I'm now going to multiply by S and divide by R to remove it from the right-hand side. Okay, let's complete that operation. So I multiply by S. There's P over Q. I multiply by S and I divide by R equals Q times R, R over S times S over R means R over S disappears from the right-hand side. And now we can see that we have our two expressions that are equivalent to each other. If P over Q divided by R over S equals Q and P over Q times S over R equals Q, uh, then it must mean, and I'll express it like this, it must mean, because they are both equal to Q, that both expressions are equal to one another. In other words, we can write P over Q divided by R over S equals P over Q times S over R. And there we've got our conversion. Right, so that's the algebra that explains why this works. Let's have a look at an example uh, using another number. Now I've got a board here and what I'm going to do with my board is I'm going to show you a number on that board as an area. So here we've got a rectangle which represents 1. And if I divide that rectangle into, well, a quarter and three quarters, then we can see that this represents one and this is a quarter. Now what I'm going to do is divide the whole board up now into quarters so that I end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quarters on the top row here and we've got three rows so three times seven I've got 21 quarters. Okay, let's write that down here. So 21 quarters becomes our, okay, 21 quarters or 21 fourths. This is our uh, dividend that we're going to start with. Now our divisor here is going to be represented by a block. But just to remind you that this is the whole number. So if I choose 7 eighths of that whole number, it's going to look like that. So there we've got 7 eighths of 21 and a quarter covered over, if you like, taken up. So we've got 21 divided by 4, or 21 fourths, divided by 7 eighths will give us our quotient equals what does it equal? So um, what are we saying? We're saying how many seven-eighths are there in 21 fourths? And to answer that, we can do our rearrangement, our inversion. So we can now re rewrite this 21 fourths times 8 over 7. And this cancels nicely, so 4 divided by 4 is 1, 
8 divided by 4 is 2, and here we can divide by 7, so 7 divided by 1, that's uh, by 7, sorry, it's 1. 21 divided by 7 is 3, and multiply across. 3 times 2 gives us our numerator, 6. 1 times 1 gives us our denominator, 1. And 6 divided by 1, we can simplify it to 6. So now, let's have a look. Is our answer plausible? Is the method that we've used, has this worked? Has it given us the correct answer? Well, if I introduce some more blocks and fill up the board, you'll see whether it does work. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and our original 6. So I think it helps to have a visual demonstration to give us the confidence that this method works very nicely and to see exactly what's going on when we're doing this inversion to come up with a number uh, to give us our quotient.